Hello, hello. Thank you for being here and welcome to the Full Bloom Into Wellness online retreat where you will learn to connect to self, spirit, and community through creativity. I am your host, Veronica Caldas, and I am so excited to introduce to you our next speaker, Miss Kristen Fagan. Hi, Kristen. Hi, Veronica. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really, really excited to be here with you all today. I'm so excited to have you here. I'm so excited for this juicy conversation we're going to have. Let me um, let our viewers know a little bit about you. So Kristen is a color dripping, wild flower loving, symbolism obsessed, expressive artist and creative well-being guide. She encourages you to be brave, love deeply and shine brightly. Her artwork is created with intention and intuition. It is full of lush, lush color, joyful energy and the discovery of magical moments. She is inspired by the natural world and is a lifelong explorer of self-expression. Dark chocolate and foot, foot massages are her self-care necessities. Nature walks, dancing, and yoga keep her grounded, and relaxing in a hammock is always a great idea. Kristen, <laughs> <laughs> Kristen believes art is an invitation to get to know yourself more fully. In her creativity group, Discover Your Creative Magic, Kristen guides you to have a more expressive human experience through art making, creative living, and meditation. She is passionate about guiding you to awaken your creative spirit, trust in your magic, and transform your life. Life is yours to create. Ah! I, I love that, Kristen. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I received that and affirm it. And it feels so good to hear all those wonderful words coming back at me because it truly is what I want to embody and bring into this world. And that you have, I can tell by that beautiful wall of art behind you. <laughs> <laughs> My burst of color and happiness back here. Yes. For sure. It truly does bring happiness, doesn't it? It does. I like to say, um, you know, the journey through the practice is for me. And then when the painting is complete, it's for everyone else to enjoy and really um, feel the energy that I poured into it. And a lot of times, um, you know, a lot of times people say to me that you have really happy, joyful art. And it may surprise you to know it doesn't always begin that way. A lot of times I show up to the canvas um, feeling a little frustrated or out of sorts or, you know, just trying to connect with myself. And maybe I'm going through some struggles that day or, um, you know, just feeling like I haven't created in a while and not feeling so great. And it's through the process that that energy gets changed and alchemizes into the joyful expression you see. And I just love, I just love that process so much. It just fills me up with um, purpose and it gives me so many messages throughout of strength and resilience. And that is why I just find um, sharing creative well-being practices to be so important and why I'm so happy to be chatting with you today. Oh my God, thank you so much for that. That's so incredibly giving, right? To just let someone know that they could transform their, their mood, their, their outlook, their day, just through creating art. Tell me how that process works. How, how can I get someone to believe in this creative <laughs> well-being <laughs> art process? Oh, it's, you know, it's one of those things where you really, um, the hardest part is getting someone to really step in and give it a try mm -hmm. because it's the mindset that, that stops us, you know, thinking that, oh, that's something that you do, or that's something that other people do. And that's not something that I can do. Um, 
And I feel like a lot of it starts with inquiry and with some journal work and writing stuff down on, and that's accessible to all of us, right? We can all take a moment to um, write things down and think about our feelings. And I love to share um, little worksheets when I can, just to give people uh, some framework of how to get started. And I find that that is a good sort of stepping stone. And then once you get into it, you realize, oh, this is so juicy and delicious and I can do this. And it doesn't have to be that I'm creating um, this magnificent masterpiece at the end, although that does happen sometimes. A lot of it is just allowing yourself to show up in a way that you can just tap into that creative process you can keep it in an art journal, you can keep it in a book or have it in your own state, you know, sacred spaces where it's really just for you. And that's how people tend to start. And then they get more and more comfortable and more and more confident. And then they're open to sharing it more with the world. And it's just a beautiful process. It's like a, it's like, it sounds like it's like a little seedling that just like grows. So just yeah. Getting that little journal and just putting that pen to paper is that seedling. 100%, 100%. And I love to start with, if you can, starting with some sort of like art journal or sketchbook. This way you can write, you can collage, you can bring in other materials and the paper will handle it all. And um, as you're ready to explore, you know, your, your book is there for you to handle any materials you want to throw at it. And speaking of materials, I tend to be pretty simple in the materials that I like to use. Uh, some of the things I use, I've been using for years and years and years. And I have people ask me all the time, you know, do you do this? And do you use that? And I said, honestly, I just go back to the simple materials that I started with. And although it's fun to bring in new art materials, um, that's not where the real juice is for me. It's really the process. And so the materials don't matter quite as much. <laughs> How you get there. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Cause it's, it's what you get out of it. And if, if, if what you get out of it is juicy with the simplest little thing, then, you know, the added stuff isn't required, but it's always fun, right? If it adds more fun to your creative right. experience, why not? Exactly. So it's like, if you want to bring in more and you want to try more, you know, go for it. I love to experiment. I do play with a lot of different things, but I don't want that to ever be like a stumbling block for anyone. I don't want anyone to feel like I, I know for me, one of my biggest struggles um, and one thing that I've worked through creatively is financial struggle. And so starting in the beginning, I really, um, I want you to know you can start with just the most basic materials a couple of dollars and get yourself going and you don't have to invest a ton right out the gate and if you love it and you want to add more fantastic but you don't have to feel like that's a, a hindrance to getting going thank you for that thank you for that because I know that there are a lot of blocks that that we all have right and finances or financial situation is definitely just one of those blocks how can the negative blocks or that negative talk hurt us help us let's talk about the negativity because oh, we know it's there <laughs> we do we need to yeah okay so um you know i'll start a little bit about how i kind of came to this process and and how it maybe found me a little bit um always been creative I've always been artistic I always knew it was something that was you know my passion and I didn't really realize the value of um how it can help me other than just you know the value of being able to make something and, and enjoyment in that process I was always a speaker as a young adult I felt very lost as a young adult and then a young parent and you start to lose little bits of yourself and so I was constantly trying to find those again and seeking out like where you know where was my joy where was this where was the place that I would get um 
my energy from. And over time, I realized that it was from creative process and that the practice of inquiry and creating art um, really connected me to my higher self and it gave me a space to be present and open and it gave me the ability to work through all of those negative feelings um, uh, your self-worth and feelings of um, not you know not being enough or um, in particular I had a lot of negativity around our financial struggles early in our life and I still have times of financial struggles that really you know it's one of those things that uh, it, it's always around. <laughs> and I had to change myself to be able to deal with it because I just kept spiraling into more and more of a negative space. Um, and it was poisonous. You know, it was like if we talk about the seeds of flowers that grow, these were planting poisonous seeds. These were planting seeds of negativity. Um, particularly ones of feeling lack and scarcity, which turned into feeling really bitter. And, you know, the stress and the worry was just overwhelming. Even when people were trying to say, hey, let's get together and go grab dinner. My mind would spiral into how can I go grab dinner? I don't have enough to do that. I can never do anything. I can't have fun. Like it was just like, it just continued, um, it just continued to spiral. And I realized that my thoughts were really taking over uh, my joy. They were just poisonous seeds. They were just killing my joy. And I had to reframe it. I had to change how I looked and how I thought about things. And the, the financial situation didn't change. I had to change. I had to figure out how can I, um, how can I say, like, up until now, <laughs> this stressed me out because, but now I'm going to look at it this way. And now I'm going to go out with my friends and maybe I'll eat dinner at home before I go and I'll just join them for a drink or for a dessert, you know, so that I'm not totally robbing myself from the experience, but I'm figuring out ways to make it work for me and still have my joy um, and one of the creative practices that really helped me with this was just doing a simple collage I did a simple collage of uh, money and abundance and security feeling safe I think money ties into safety for me and probably mm -hmm. for a lot of people mm -hmm. and so I wasn't feeling safe and that was adding to all of the negative feelings um, so I did it just a really simple cut paint things out from a collage, put it all together. And then on the back side of it, I wrote myself a note. I wrote myself a note that I could read to myself and say, um, I don't have it in front of me, but it said something like, money is always flowing to me. I have more money than a percentage of the population. You know, we are in, in, where we live and what we do, we do have an abundance of money. It just was very difficult for me to understand how to relate that. Um, so I did this, this soul collage and I wrote a whole thing on the back. And anytime I was feeling really stressed about money, I would look at it and I would just feel that energy of what I wanted. And I would turn it around and I would read that message to myself on the back, showing myself that, you know, I did have an abundance more than other people do and to be grateful for what I do have and that more money is always coming to me and just kind of be open and receiving and little by little that process totally changed how I looked at it and and allowed me to kind of loosen that grip that I had and every every rub or everything that showed up that was money related no longer like knocked me down you know I was able to just sort of relax into the process and I would go to that collage and I still have it to this day on my desk that I can go grab it and like look at it if I need to um, and that was really a turning point that was really one of those things where I said this has power 
Major power. Major power. Major. Thank you for sharing that. That was so beautiful. And I know so many viewers can relate to that feeling of, of scarcity and, and fear of stability and security, which we all, right? We mm -hmm. all can relate to. And, and so this creative practice that you have found and now that you, now you share with so many is such an amazing gift. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I really was hoping that that story would resonate with a lot of you. And, you know, you can take out the money and the finance and put in anything in that place and really um, see how when you can, when you can see something, when you can create a visual, either it being a collage or, or a painting, um, you can create something and then truly allow yourself to be open to believing it. It, it causes change. It causes change in us. I know there's some non-believers out there. And I know they, that I'm not one of them <laughs> because <laughs> like you have been, right? I have been at my wit's end, feeling very scarce, feeling very worried. And then also feeling like, holy moly, art is power. And so many people may not feel that they can even draw a stick figure. Mm -hmm. So they don't even think that they're artists or creators. But in fact, we are all creators of our own lives, right? We are. We are. And how many times do I draw a stick figure or any kind of figure? Really, really rarely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so don't, you know, you just, just playing with color, just coming to the canvas or the paper. And, you know, if you're in a very, say you're in a very contemplated melancholy, or just sort of like, mood, you know, maybe you'll gravitate towards blues and grays and, um, you know, just sort of let those flow on the page, or you're really frustrated, or something's happening in your life that is just making you um, a bit angry, you know, maybe you're going to lash out on that page with some scribbles and it'll be like reds and, you know, oranges or blacks or something really dramatic. Mm -hmm. um, there's just, just those simple types of exercises. They release something in you. They, in a way they give your feelings um, validation, you know, like just through the color and just through the action you're giving validation to how you feel. And sometimes it's really hard to do that in our lives. And this is a way to kind of open up to those feelings and allow your subconscious to just sort of take over, um, which is one reason why I don't always like to give colors for a project. I will, I, you know, I don't, always say like, hey, we're going to do this color and then this color and this color. Like, I want you to pick up what colors are calling to you because mm -hmm. there's power in the color and it's, you know, there's messaging there that you're going to receive whether or not you really are conscious of it um, in the power of those colors. How do you think that power is received? Do you, for non-believers, right? I'm a believer. <laughs> But there are, I have, I have some naysayers that may, may really want to believe that they're creators or artists, but are, they're just, how do we get them to believe? Oh, that's so, it's, it's such an interesting um, question because we have to show up like this, right? We have to show up and we have to keep giving them little nudges. Um, you know, my free Facebook group is a great example. I invite people into there all the time whenever I get talking with them. And I said, hey, you're on Facebook, come join me over in the free group. And, you know, there's a lot of looky loos. There's a lot of people that are just in there, just checking things out. And, you know, whether or not they're doing the practice on their own, I'm not sure. Maybe they're not sharing yet, or maybe they're just sort of seeing what's going on. And within the community, when they see other people share, you know, oh, I see how she's doing it now, or I see how that affected her because she 
showed something different than what Kristen shared, you know, but it's the same project, but she's showing a different side of it. Um, so it's within those communities that people start to get braver and give, um, give it a try. So it, I just have to get out there more, I guess. We just have to get out there more and share and, and show people how, um, how it can help and how it can be. And I don't think you really truly believe it until you have it help you, until you go through the process and it, and it really affects you in a positive way. Yes, yes. Yes. I feel that the art holds a certain space for you, for your feelings to validate those emotions, right? Because if you're not writing and all you're doing is thinking, then all you have are your thoughts. And let's, let's say that, you know, subconsciously through that channel of, you know, spirit, through art, through color, through symbols, through just the time that you dedicate to that feeling, it just, it somehow. Yeah. I love that you brought up symbols because I am obsessed with symbolism too. And that's a way that I, I try to tie my art process into my creative living and out in the world. So, you know, when I, go for a walk and I see a bunny or, you know, maybe I go for a walk a few times a week and I keep seeing the same bird. Those, I, I immediately get drawn to like, oh, what, what message does that have for me? You know, is it telling me to, to fly and like, you know, take that leap or is there something um, in that particular in that particular item I'm seeing that that's giving me some wisdom and I'll use Google and I'll say, you know, what happens when you see this kind of bird or what happens when you see, you know, and she read through it and go, Oh, see if there's anything that connects and really resonates. And that's a way to kind of bring the magic. I feel like from my everyday into the studio and kind of let them cross over. Um, I do that. So then I might come into my studio and maybe I'll paint something um, with that animal or that symbol on there or vice versa. Maybe I'm in my studio and something shows up. Maybe there's some symbols that show up like spirals or, um, you know, things of that nature. And then that's an ancient symbol. You can go look and see what the meaning of that is. And so there's, there's this connection between what I'm doing and feeling and also what's happening outside of me and, you know, how do they relate and what are the synchronicities? And then I find that it's just so juicy. It's just more ways of discovering yourself in your world, you know? Yes. And how we're so connected to the world. And when we start to pay attention just a little bit, it's almost like, it's like, like, like flowers blooming as we, as we start yes. to notice it's really, 100%. really fun. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love all things art. I love all things creative. So we, I could talk to you all day. <laughs> I know it's so true. <laughs> I know, I know you have a free gift that you want to share with the audience and I would just love to let you just take it on over and take it away. Sounds wonderful. Yes. I am so excited. We didn't talk um, about, you know, my path to getting here, but I started as a graphic designer and I feel like I've always served my community through my creative, um, my creative practices. So I started as a graphic designer for small business. Oh, let me just make sure I didn't. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Phone call came in. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> And uh, so I started as a graphic designer for small businesses, helping them with their creative passion. And then I moved into doing um, jewelry tutorials and sharing mm -hmm. jewelry tutorials with people and tapping into that side of your creative, um, your creative self. And all along, I was always doing a lot of art inquiry for my own well-being. And so now I've moved into sharing that the last few years and it's just taken everything to a whole nother level wow. so for today's project I wanted to bring in the art 
I wanted to bring in some inquiry and some, uh, you know, words of empowerment. And I also have some beads and some fun little things we can add to it. So we're going to make a little wall hanging. Um, if you want to, I just thought it would be a, a nice way to share how you can take this art and then create something that you can hang in your space as a reminder. So it's called Empower Flower and Petals of Inspiration. Um, so let me go ahead and turn my camera down and we'll get started. There we go. So here's our little Empower Flower. And I created this PDF um, for you to also hand out and, and let you all um, print out if you wanted to, or even just look at. And I've got some little places for you to fill in. <laughs> I love um, it. To help you come up with your Empower Flower. So here is the example that we That's are going to be doing. Isn't it so sweet? I love it. Yay. And I got a, a little quote on the back side. Um, Respond to every call that excites your spirit by Rumi. And then on the front side, for each of the petals, I want you to think about what excites your spirit. What are things that you just love and bring you joy. And this can be a little reminder of how to bring more of that into your life. I Just love say, that. These are the things I love to do. <laughs> it's so beautiful. You could hang it anywhere as a reminder, keep it close by to just show yourself some, every time you look at it, I would smile. <laughs> I'd be happy right? looking at it. Yeah, it's, it's gorgeous. It's so cute. <laughs> um, I was even thinking, I made this a little small, but if you did um, a larger loop here, you can maybe hang it on a doorknob or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, but this would probably be better just kind of hanging on the wall and in your workspace or in some place where you'd see it, you know, maybe your kitchen or something like that where you'd see it on the regular and just remind yourself. Um, hey, you know, I love the moon cycle and learning about the moon. And I haven't paid attention to that in a little while. And maybe right. it's, maybe today is the day I go and spend a little time with the moon or spend a little time with color or dance, you know, Yes. and whatever yes. it is for you. So a few things I'll talk about first are just supplies. I've got some paint colors here. And I use um, just some craft acrylic paint. This is called Cherry Cobbler. That's this color here. This is a simple pink, that one there. And any acrylic paints will do, or if you have acrylic paint pens, that'll work also. Mm -hmm. Here's a moss green, that's that one. And the last one is just your um, traditional blue. I have a lot of that one. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I have for paint colors. I do have a few paint pens here. I like to do some of the um, detail work with paint pens. I find them really fun to play with. Uh -huh. And this one's my favorite brand is the Posca. But there's also other paint pens that you can, uh, you can find as well. And then I've just got these in a blue, dark blue, light blue. This is like a light orangey peach and a pink. And you don't need to have paint pens. You can just use acrylic paint for the whole process if you want to. For my shape, I used a coaster. So if you happen to have a coaster, round coaster laying around. This was four and a half inches in diameter. And that's what I used to create my stencil. And for the actual background, I just used a piece of cardboard. So you can grab this, re recycle it from um, some boxes you might have lying around. Just cut a little piece out that's gonna be big enough for your 
coaster. Nothing fancy. And of course, I've got my pencil for my stencil. I've got a pen here. Um, I actually use this to poke a hole. So because it's got a, a little sturdier of a point, you can poke a hole with this. Uh, this is my favorite gel pen, the Uniball Signo white gel pen. And that's what I used for all of the words. You can use a gel pen, you can use a, even just a pen or a marker, especially if your petals stay a lighter color, you can just use a black marker or a pen on top. So there's a few other options. I love white gel pens. They are so fun. And this one, I don't know if you use this one, but once I found mm -hmm. this one, I was, I was hooked and I <laughs> buy them every chance I get now. <laughs> yeah. They, you, you use them a lot. So the first thing you're going to do is just cut out. So with a pair of scissors, you're going to cut out your shape after you make it with your coaster or any other. You can try, you know, I like to look around my house and see what I have, you know, so you don't have to run out and grab a certain stencil. Maybe you have a planter or something else that will fit that shape well. And let me grab some scissors. So first thing we'll do is just cut out our shape. And so when I was thinking about this project, I was really thinking about how, you know, we evolve when we stop holding on to the petals of our past self and we embrace our magnificence and the things that we love right here in the present moment. And so this is a little reminder of what we love. And sometimes it can be easy in our, in our busy lives to really remember to take time for ourselves and tap into the things that we enjoy doing. And um, this is a way to kind of say, hey, wait a minute, I haven't done that in a while and I love that. So I need to make some time for it. Yes, remembering that it's okay to make time for things that are fun. <laughs> right? <laughs> Okay, I have some brushes here. I just got a few different shapes of square and round, some smaller ones to, to make my outline. And of course, I've got some water. So before I get started with any painting, I always like to just ground myself, take some deep breaths and do a little, um, just a little quick breath work to bring myself to the present moment. So I invite you all to go ahead and close your eyes. Take a nice deep breath. And just bring yourself right here, right now. Let everything else fade away. And give yourself this time and this space to just enjoy this creative process. Another deep inhale. Take one more. And I just want to share with you that your mind is a garden. Your thoughts are the seeds. You can grow flowers or you can grow weeds. Just let that sink in a minute. And we'll take one more breath. And then you can go ahead and open your eyes. I hope that helps to kind of center you and bring you here to this project and, and what, we're, 
what we're doing a little bit. Um, I share in the worksheet just some ideas of, we're going to be talking about this one here, Petals of Joy. So giving life to what you give energy to, thinking about what you want more of, and remind, remembering that things that excite you are not random, they are connected to your purpose. So follow them. And here's a little space where you can think about some items you might want to put in there, and then that'll help you decide how many petals you want to have around in your, in your space. And then I also have two other suggestions. Um, you can do petals of affirmation where you do some IMs and do some I am statements. And then another one is petals of power where you can think about your blooming superpowers and jot those down. So those are just some alternatives um, to the petals of joy. Give you a couple of options there on what you might want to explore. So I'm gonna start with the center and I use this blue in the center. And then I followed it with the green and you can clean off your brush, but since blue and green work so well together, I'm just gonna go right into my green <laughs> and not worry about wiping it off. That's one nice thing when you work with colors that are happy together. You don't have to uh, worry about them making mud. <laughs> nice. And this is real simple. We're just, I'm not measuring anything out. I'm just creating that one little blue dot in the center. And then I'm mostly going to be using green. And then I've got this little ring of red around the outside. If you're someone who feels more comfortable with drawing it out ahead of time and, and knowing where the one color starts and stops, you're welcome to do that. But I like to just dive right in and allow it to be perfectly imperfect. And since I am switching to red, I will change my brush so I have a fresh one. And then just do this cherry red color around the outside. So one of the things to think about is that your mind, it believes everything you tell it. <laughs> so that is why it is important to tell it positive things. And that doesn't mean that, you know, negative thoughts don't happen because we all have them arise. Even positive people have negative thoughts but you don't want them to stick around. You don't want those thoughts to really seed. You wanna be able to acknowledge them and reframe them a bit. Okay, so there's my background. And in the magic of television, here I have one all dry. <laughs> <laughs> Since I know we want to write on it, so I'm just going to leave it. this one aside. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's totally dry. And then on the back side, I added in a little pink on that side. So the back was a little different because I have a big quote in the center. And so I just wanted the blue to be larger to have the ability to add that quote. And then I used a little pink, green, and red 
just to change it up a little. But you are free to do any colors that you want, whatever calls to you and feels good. I want you to honor that. All right, so from here, I'm gonna use my paint pen in the dark blue to draw out my flower. And this is why I wanted a piece that was dry because these paint pens, I think most paint pens, they want a dry surface. They do not wanna write on a surface that is still wet. You'll find that it won't really work for you. Um, so you really want your surface to be nice and dry and then these will write beautifully. So at this point, you would refer to what you wrote down and how many petals you might wanna have. I think I left space for eight, um, but you can do less or you can do more if you wanted to. I think on this one, I have seven right now. So I'll just work off that number and I'm gonna make my petal from the center and I'm gonna go all the way up to that cherry line. So I'm just going around the green basically. And again, I'm just going to wing it. And I ended up with six petals, which is totally fine. And see how, how easy that is. One of these paint pens just work so lovely. I love them. They really, if you worry about, um, you know, using a brush, if that just feels a little uncomfortable, I think these are a great way to add detail and, and you know, it feels more like a, a pen or a pencil in your hand. Mm -hmm. So next I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the light blue and just color in my petals. I just love how that light blue pops mm -hmm. on that dark green background. So a nice light color. This color was, was light, but it was still okay with the white pen. It just sort of, um, you know, the contrast isn't quite as great but it works. But if you're using a black pen or um, a marker, this color would still work really well for that too. So what kind of things bring you joy, Veronica? I know I'm gonna share some of mine, but if you were making your petal, what would come to mind for you? Flowers for sure. My doggy, um, uh, summertime, um, dancing, music. Yeah, love them. Yes. Um, what else brings me lots of joy? Laughter. Laughter's a good one. You know, so if you're having a, in a day and you look at your your petals and you go, oh, I just don't feel like I have laughed in a while. Maybe that's a good night to watch a comedy. Totally. <laughs> Maybe you have a friend that is always um, quick to laugh with you and maybe it's time to, to chat with them or, um, so it doesn't always have to be, you know, the same way, you know, you can, you can decide. For flowers, for example, that's on mine too. Maybe one day I, ha I go and I get myself flowers or maybe another day I go and I visit a botanical garden and I just walk through flowers. And, you know, there's lots of ways you can um, adjust the things you love, what makes sense for you at that time. I think what's so important is the reminder, having this around you hopefully gets you to think that 
I can be in a good mood if I want to. I can try to find wonderful things to make me feel joy. Yeah, that is it in a nutshell. I choose, right? I can choose to feel differently. I can choose even regarding, like taking your circumstance, whatever it is, out of the equation. You can always make a choice um, to do something to make yourself feel better and feel good and not be stuck in the, in the spiral of the negative feeling. Yeah. That looks really good already. What? Right. So you could stop here. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you could stop here if you wanted to. And then I just continued um, adding some detail. So I I pulled these little guys out. Um, This one added some detail and continued to play. And so this is where you can really just let your mind relax and decide, oh, let me just add a little bit of these dots here, or let me add these little lines here and allow the creative process to become a bit of a meditation and action. So can I, can I point something out that you're probably, um, the, you probably have done away with the idea that you could mess it up, right? Right. Yes. There is always, um, there's always ways to keep adding and changing. And so every time you make a quote unquote mistake, you can use that as, well, what do I do next? Right. So Say I like accidentally just like picked this up and went like that <laughs> uh-huh. and had this weird little line there. Um, I can, instead of getting upset about it, you know, I can just say, oh, what could that be a jumping off point for? Maybe I'm just going to make these little <laughs> starbursts in the corner. Look how great <laughs> that looks. <laughs> and then I can do that mm-hmm. another time, you know, When you're working in a circular um, formation like that, I think it's really easy to take um, something that could look like a mistake and just repeat it, (laughs) repeat it all the way around. And then now you've got a whole different um, look and equally as fantastic. So you can never get it wrong. (laughs) It can, you can never, never be, get it wrong. Yeah, I, the freedom, the that looks so beautiful. Super cute. Look at that. That was a happy accident. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So that's one thing I always like to share with people. So thank you for pointing that out. Like, there's one of the reasons why I love paint in particular is it's such a forgiving medium and especially acrylic paint because once it dries, you can just go right over it again. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I showed up here tomorrow and I was at this point and I just was like, oh gosh, this is just not, I am not feeling it. I could potentially paint it all white (laughs) and just start from scratch and do it all over. Um, Or like I did before was just go with it, you know, like use those little accidents or what you perceive as an accident as a jumping off point for what can come next and just let it be um, something that is kind of its own living, breathing thing, you know, freedom, freedom. (laughs) So then I'll use my gel pen, my lovely gel pen or marker, and then just add in here my words. And you can do them in block letters. You can do them in script. You can decide to change them where sometimes it's one way and sometimes it's another. So that it has a little variation and so pretty. becomes a little bit m- more playful.
Mm, I miss the water. So the water keeps showing up for me. I live in the desert and um, yeah. we do have some lakes and stuff here, but it's been so hot this time of year. You can't even really go enjoy that either. So yeah. I'm missing the water. And that pretty so blue can... lo looks like such refreshing, cool water, right? It does. Maybe that's where that kind of inspiration came from. Good eye. Little drops of water. That might have been what I was thinking mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> when I was making it without, without realizing it. That's a great, you know, metaphor. <laughs> right. It's true. I wouldn't have known if you didn't mention that, that you've been missing the water. Yep. Those synchronicities. I just love it. So, so cool. Now, if you want to decorate it and add the little beads and the wire, um, you just got to get uh, some, you got to poke some holes. And so you can use something like this, like a pen like this that has a nice sturdy, since we're just working with cardboard, it's pretty uh, forgiving. And just poke that right through. Like I said, I like to use simple materials and make things accessible. So this is probably something most of us have around. Um, you can also use the tip of a pair of scissors if you are um, someone who does dabble with, with any kind of beads or crafts. Maybe you have a little awl or a pair of round nose pliers like something like this this is something you'd work with in jewelry making and that would make a great little hole um so you just or a hole punch i don't have a hole punch that would be thick enough for this but maybe some of you do mm -hmm. have a hole punch for that and then just create one at the top and at the bottom if you want to do something like this or if you wanted to create a loop this way you can always do holes kind of two holes on the side and then run your wire around that way. Oh, I like that. So after you fill in your petals, and the other thing I really liked was on the back side, um, just coming up with a little quote. It could be a quote like this, like that's you know by Rumi, by someone else, or it could be a quote that you put together yourself that is in relation to what you're working on here. So I put on the back, Respond to every call that excites your spirit. And again, I did that with a gel pen. And then I used just these little um, Posca pens to decorate around it. So that gave it a little, a little extra flare on the other side. They make such great dots. <laughs> <laughs> really, really quick, really simple. And you just let the, let the marker do its thing, some lines. And you can get more complicated here if you want to let yourself uh, express what you want to express. Mm -hmm. But I thought that just showing some lines and some dots and you're good to go. Very nice. For the last part, I am going to use um, some craft wire. So this is 20 gauge craft wire. This is by a company called Softlex Company. And they are someone I work with to do jewelry tutorials um, on a weekly basis. So you can find me over there every week sharing jewelry ideas at awesome. um, company. Yeah, um, on their YouTube channel is where you'll find me. That's so cool. It's been really fun. I've been work working with them for years as a designer. Let me find out where this is open. And um, it's just been the last like two and a half years or so that I've been doing the YouTube channel and sharing things there and it's been such a great experience getting to know people and um, really just sharing all sorts of fun projects every week. So you don't need this tool but this is a wire straightening tool. It's called a nylon jaw plier but you can always just kind of use your fingers and straighten it out a little bit too. 
you will need a pair of wire cutters, which look like this, just to snip your wire. I don't know if your scissors would get harmed. So I would suggest just getting a simple pair of wire cutters whenever you're working with this kind of stuff. And I'm just gonna stick the wire through and bend it like so. And then using my fingers, I'm just gonna wrap it around. And you can get messy. I mean, I love a messy wrap. <laughs> or if you're someone who has the little tools and you can make it a little neater, but um, I tend to love the organic, messy, hand, hand forged leg. <laughs> I'm very, I'm very so, messy hands on too. <laughs> yeah, I just find it, you know, it takes the pressure off and I like the look. I really do. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just going to add some fun little details here. I've got, um, a little tassel and some beads and I do I do have these from Softlex company as well so if that was something that you never have done before and you wanted to pick up a few things you can grab some beads and the tassels from them and I'm just going to pick out like two beads from this little strand I want them to probably be a little bit bigger. So maybe, maybe this blue one and this and this silver one will work just like that. Beautiful. And then I'll tie in our colors. And I don't know about you, but tassels make things fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fringe tassel. <laughs> yes, they do. They make sequins. So I have <laughs> sequins. Yep, some sparkle. Mm -hmm. And I have way more wire than I really needed for this, which is which is fine. But <laughs> so if you're looking like you definitely did not need that much wire. <laughs> so just like we kind of pulled it around on the top we're going to pull it around our tassel and then wrap it under that bead and because I have a lot of wire you can just keep going until you use it or you can cut it off with your wire cutters see how far I get that seems like that's a good and good enough mm -hmm. and then I just trim that And then I'll cut another piece for my top and add another bead up there too, if you want to. Flowers are just such a great metaphor, right? With the seeds of hope. And when you, you know, you that quote, when you plant a flower, you're planting hope because you're, you're, you got to wait around for it to, uh, <laughs> to bloom. It takes a little while. You have to have some patience. So when yes. you're doing stuff like this, that's a good thing to remember, you know, like positive affirmations and positive thoughts. Like you, you don't always get, um, results immediately sometimes it just takes a little bit of time and you got to be patient and really let those seeds grow so All so right, good so how am I going to do my little top here I think what I'm going to do is you just want to find something that gives you a nice size and I think I'm just going to use the spool and wrap my wire around the spool to give me my circular shape or get, at least get it started. 
see how I like to just use whatever's around. <laughs> I do. I love that. I love that you do that. No like, hurdles you for you. Get... Right? Yeah. What do you got nearby? <laughs> and then just using your finger, you're just going to kind of manipulate the wire until you get it to a shape that kind of works. And even after you wrap it, you can still kind of play with this shape a bit. And you're just going to hold it closed with one hand and then wrap that wire around. So I use 20 gauge wire, which is a nice size because you can wrap it with your finger. Um, it's, it's still pretty okay to do that. It's not too thick, but it's also thick enough that it'll hold nicely on the wall and it won't be too flimsy. It's kind of a good middle size. And then I'm just gonna trim off that extra. And there you go. Lovely, so beautiful. Yay. Yay. So put your energy, put your energy into creating your joy, have your little petals of joy and inspiration as a reminder, something you can stick on your wall or um, hang somewhere nearby that reminds you of all the stuff that you love. It reminds you of your joy, things maybe you're curious about. So you can even do things that maybe you don't do yet or, but you're curious about. Maybe there's a hike you wanted to do, but you just haven't done it. And that could be something that you put on here as a reminder that you really wanna focus and do that. And um, it just, it, it really brings you to who you are becoming, right? So this is like a little snapshot of your authenticity, what, what lights you up, where you wanna put your energy. Yes. Oh, your choice. I Yay. love it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me just twist myself back up. <laughs> so Thank good. You so much for allowing me to share that with everyone. I really, I really love it. Kristen, we are so blessed and grateful for that beautiful gift that you shared with us. Thank you. So appreciative of you, you and your time. Where can we, where can our, our viewers see more of you or find you? All right. Well, you can find me at kristenfagan.com. That is my website and that goes to kind of everything. Um, you can find me in my Facebook group, Discover Your Creative Magic. That is a great way to kind of dip your toes in and see what's going on in there. I do monthly themes. So I'm always sharing a theme and an art project every month. Um, so it's a lot of fun. And if you go to my website, kristenfagan.com, I have on the homepage, a little place for you to sign up um, to awaken your creative spirit. And that is seven days of prompts of just creative living prompts and things to kind of get you thinking and some also some other little practices that you can do. Uh, so I'd love for you to check that out if you feel called. And then if you are interested in any type of jewelry making or anything with the beads, you can find me on the Softlex Company YouTube channel every Monday sharing a new tutorial on how to, um, how to create your own jewelry. Wow, woman. Yes. <laughs> so good. So, so good. Yes. All around. Yes. Applause. Round of applause. So many fun things to share and ways to kind of get creative with me. And I would love, love, love to have you join me. So hope to see you. Thank you so, so much. This has been such a joy and you definitely will see more of us. Thank you so, so much, Kristen. Thank you, Veronica. May everyone bloom into wellness. <laughs>